right, guys, got a little lock here from Steel Pinnings, and I, this has been cut in half, a snapper, obviously, so I should be able to gut this pretty, <laughs> for me anyway, pretty easily. Snap that ring off. Um, here's what your pinning looks like. He didn't wrap it up to protect it, so he's pretty confident in the pinning, it looks like. Nice, nice keyway, very paracentric, so I'm going to have to probably tension it. Well, either top or bottom, and it doesn't really matter, but I can't really use that space on the bottom there. And then pick from the right edge, it looks like. Um, I did put the key in. Well, that time it went in really nicely. Other times it seems to get caught. There we go. So I don't know if there's a tight spring in there or if I just need to squirt a little lube in it. It does work perfectly, and there are no uh, threaded caps on the top of here. No other weirdness on the entire lock. I think we might have a spring in here. So let's go ahead and, now that, since I have the vise so handy here, not on the other side of the shop. If I can just hold that like that and get that dude. There's no actuator on this thing to worry about. So all I got to do is make sure that it doesn't pinch uh, the core too tight. All right, I'm going to use, let me try top of the keyway. See if I can fit that one. Nope. Okay, red doesn't work. Try a white one. Here we go. So I'm using the, I think it's a 1.0 1 .1 millimeter from Mad Bob's. Got a little slop in there. Um, Let's try it the easy way. I'm going to take this guy, 15 thousandths. And I think I can work him around the corner and do some raking. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and put a mark on it. Steel pinnings, you know this got some stuff in there. So I'm going to try to pick it clockwise. So let me tension it clockwise to take all the slack out. Put us a mark right here. And that ought to do it. Okay. Light tension up and around the corner. And let's start raking. And I think, I'm sure, we already have a fault set. So we got at least one of the pins. Or we are stuck on a spool. All right, we are stuck on a spool or maybe a T-pin. I really can't tell. Oops, a little too much there, Bill. I will take it, though. All right, so throw that aside. Let me find a pick here. Let's try. We're going to pick this one or choose this one and see if they can. I ought to be able to go from that ledge on the right. So let's try it all the way in. And something definitely stuck on the bottom back there. So let's start from the front. Looking for any kind of counter rotation or a click from a T pin. I've got moderate tension on it. Okay, I'm stuck on pin four. He's absolutely on the bottom. So I'm going to slide it on the bottom all the way in and then rotate it around to get the hook behind that very low cut. Then I'll start picking from the back, moving forward until I hit that low cut one again. Looking for counter rotation. Get back around him. Nothing. Where'd it go? There's got to be something in there. All right. I think it's that very low cut one. So, oh, got to click on him. Lost the fault set, though. Not good. Let's see if we can get it back with the, uh, with the rake again. Nope, not playing with us. Do it the hard way. All right, there we go. We got it back. So it was pin two. I think it's probably a very narrow waisted spool. I believe that is counter rotation on one. Oh. Where are you? There we go. Pin five. We lost that false set. What in the world? Let me rake it with the pick. Get that back down. Get another try at him.
There it is. Pin five, nice solid counter rotation. Okay, good. Now we got a deep fault set, deeper than before. I was trying to bully him. That didn't work out too good for me. So let me baby it. <laughs> and there we go. All right. Security baby. Oh, oh, oh. Back out. All right, let's go ahead. We know the key works. Come on. There we go. Beauteous. Let's pull that clip off and see what we got inside. Move this stuff out of here. Hold it with my hand. All right. Where'd you go? There you are. Let's see if we can use this guy and pry him open. Come on. All right, so far so good. And the tray. And let's see what we got. Let's turn him like that. Keep the pins pointing up. Get that tag out of the way when you follow her. Make sure we're nothing to fall into. I am going to shim it. Just in case, steel pinnings put some nastiness in there. As I'm sure he did. And I don't see it here. Those look like all original pins. Beautiful finish. Exactly the way you'd expect to find them. All the anti-drill pins, the carbide inserts are missing from those four holes. But we don't have to worry about picking those. So it doesn't matter. All right, we have a homemade spool. Same thing. I believe these are homemade. They are very nice. There's another one. A baby. Number four. Homemade spool. Every one of these are spools. And let's see what we got here. Nothing. Totally stock core. Let's see what we got up there. A, uh, I almost just yanked that out of there. If I can get the camera to cooperate here. That is a pin and pin. Oh, and you just saw it fall out. And a double spring. So that little tiny one obviously is for the inner pin. And then the double spring would add additional tension to the outer pin. And let's see what we got here. Number two. And I can just see the edge of it there. Come on, camera. So it looks like a T-pin. Come on. Oh. Okay, he had a T-pin element. That is one of the chess pieces, I believe. From the Sparrows selection. Very nice. Steel pin, steel spring. Number three. Why are you not focusing for me today? Okay, I'm totally clear and he's just barely sticking above the shear line. And he's so, there he goes. Total spool, and this is a commercial one, steel spool. Come on. Very light spring. All right, number four. Again, he just barely breaks the shear. Let me get a light down inside of there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oh, wait a minute. What am I talking about, Bill? Let me push that follower back in. I forgot to pull the shim out. I didn't see him. He was perfectly flush with the side there. There we go. Now we're in business. Again, look at that. Very deep spool. Oh, 
Oh, and different springs. So we got five different springs, or four different springs so far. Five if you count the inner one. All right, let's flip it over. Okay, we have an Asa pin. I believe that is a commercial one. Finally, a duplicate spring. And the last one. I think you saw him sticking up with a T-pin. <laughs> That's not just a straight T-pin. Look at that. It's like a little pagoda with a swollen head on them. Those little serrations in there. Very nice. And another duplicate. So he's the same as number three. All right, let's look inside of here to see if we got any modifications. Nothing. It's all stock. So all the magic is right there, guys. I don't know if these key pins are... These might be commercial key pins, or commercial key pins, because they, are, they all have the identical width, the ident uh, depth, and identical width on the narrow, wasted part of the pin. So they, they probably are not homemade, I'm guessing. Steel pinnings, let me know if I'm wrong on that. This uh, is a pin and pin. This one was a chess piece from the Sparrows, I believe. Uh, we have a commercial steel spool. Very nice, very deep. Another homemade one with a little bit of everything on here. Spool, serrations, uh, everything. This is the inverted pagoda with a swollen head. And the last one is a, I believe, a commercial Asa pin. Very nice. Not a lot of mods would have to be had to be made to make this a pretty secure lock. So steel pinnings, appreciate you sending this in. Everybody else, guys, stay safe, stay legal.